In today's video, I'm going over KDE Connect. This allows two-way communication, either your phone to your computer or your computer to your phone, and you can do a lot of really cool stuff with this program. So I'm gonna showcase a couple things I use KDE Connect in this video. However, it does a lot of things. So by no means is when I showing the only things it can do. Its list is very extensive. I think it does upwards of 20 or 30 different things, whether you're on the phone or the computer. So you can do pretty much everything you can fathom when it comes to two-way communications between your cell phone and your computer. A couple things to note here though, this is a Linux app and or a Linux program, so I'm gonna be showing it on a KDE desktop environment. Um, I'll go over some of the things, nuances of the install. You can install it on pretty much every desktop environment out there. There's just a couple more packages you might need to install if you're not using native KDE. And then likewise, on your phone, I use an Android phone. I don't know if like iPhones, I don't think they can actually do this because they lock it down a little more. But on Android phones, you can actually install the KDE Connect app. And that's what I'm gonna be using for this demonstration. I have installed it on my Android phone. I launch it and then do a, just a pairing. But it is needed for the actual app to be installed on the cell phone and you must be connected through the Wi-Fi uh, with your computer. So you guys need to be on the actual same network in that regard. So as far as the big things I actually use it for, which I'll go ahead and jump over and show you, is battery life, actually seeing what bad, how much battery I have left on my phone in case I forget to charge it in, getting SMSs on my desktop environment, being able to do a quick reply and typing out the response using my keyboard is pretty huge without even leaving my desktop. And then also, uh, kind of remote control using my phone. Times I'm on my phone or I'm in the bedroom and I don't feel like getting up and walking 10 feet or you know maybe 40 feet from the bed to the actual computer room here. Well, you know, I could actually just log in with my phone, use and control my computer with my phone. That's pretty powerful. A little scary too, but it's still pretty awesome when you set it up. Now, if you don't like any of these features or you like don't like some of them, just remember that you can actually control how much you get in the KDE Connect app on the desktop here. Uh, when I pull up the KDE Connect app, it lists all its modules. You can disable some of these modules such as remote control if you're a little more paranoid or you wanna be really security conscious and you don't want to have that ability. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump on over to the desktop and start configuring KDE Connect. Okay, so let's begin with installation of KDE Connect. Since I'm using a KDE environment, all I need to do is simply sudo apt install KDE Connect. That's it. It's only one package. It's built in uh, default by the Debian repo, so pretty much every Debian-based thing should have it. If you're on Arch or another one, KDE Connect should also probably be in their default repositories too because it's pretty universal application. However, if you're not using KDE for your desktop environment, uh, let's say you're using pretty much anything but GNOME or GNOME, well, you're gonna actually need to install one more thing called indicator-kde connect instead of just kde connect. So it'd be kde connect, and then it would just be indicator-kde connect. Now for indicator-kde connect, you will probably need to add another repository so it can see it should you not see it like uh, my current package did. I'm not gonna add that repo, obviously, just because I run KDE pretty much full time. However, uh, now if you are using uh, GNOME, just be aware that you will need to use GS Connect instead of KDE Connect, uh, but it uses the same protocol and it still uses pretty much everything that KDE made, so uh, you still can get a lot of the great functionality that we're gonna be going over in this video. Okay, so now that we have this installed, we need to pair it. Uh, just go to your notification bar and then go to KDE Connect. Now it's gonna say no pair devices, so we can just pretty much right click it and then say KDE Connect settings. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and install and connect an app. So I have my phone here. Um, I'm not gonna actually be able to show you on here, but you need to install the KDE Connect app directly on your phone and then simply pair it. So let's go ahead and do that. So very first thing when you pull up the app, I'm gonna see if I can't get a good read on that. You'll come to this screen right here. 
and it'll show pretty much all your available devices on your network. I see mine, I'm gonna go ahead and request pairing with it. So it should pull up here and you see it says pairing request from LGE and I'll hit accept. So with this, we should actually be paired now and from here, it'll show you kind of all the stuff. On my screen, I can see send files, slideshow remote, multimedia control, run a remote command, or do remote input. So I could actually take my phone here, hit remote input, and then I can move my finger right here just on the screen and it's gonna move my mouse around. Kinda cool, I mean, this is really neat, or if I needed to type something, um, let's say I needed to come up to here, I could actually just click this and then start typing on a keyboard, all using KDE Connect. <laughs> that's pretty sweet for remote input. But at the same time, that's really not what I use it very much for, except maybe on like a home theater system, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, one other thing you can do, which I'm gonna back out of this, is one, send the files back and forth, obviously pretty awesome there. I'm gonna go ahead and set my phone down, but I'm gonna back out it kind of shows you a lot of different things like how much your battery life is on here. You can go ahead and receive notifications. So if someone sends me a notification through my phone, a text message, anything like that, I can actually reply to it as well. So uh, this right here, the telephony integration is completely awesome. So depending on what phone you're using, whether, um, what version of Android and things you're on, it will probably look a lot differently than my phone, but when I was doing this, just make sure you go through and allow the KDE Connect app to uh, have access to the, all the telephony, all the things that you would need, so you can actually read those notifications, because obviously by default, Android blocks everything, so uh, when you actually install the application, just be sure to give it elevated access and allow it to run in the background, and you need to do that through your system settings in Android. But with that, now when someone texts me, I can just see it pop up in my system tray. I'm like, oh, I got a text from uh, my good friend Chris. And I'll be like, okay, cool. And then I can just hit reply on my computer and type on my keyboard right back at him without ever leaving my desktop. That's pretty awesome because before you'd have to use like Android SMS on using the web browser and not having to do all that and just directly communicating with your phone is just a lifesaver and I love it. So that was KDE Connect. I absolutely love this program. I started using it a couple weeks ago. I think someone in my Discord channel said, hey, you gotta try KDE Connect. And I was like, what's that? <laughs> I, I genuinely didn't know anything about it and then I started using it and I'm like, this is a freaking awesome program. It is so cool. And another thing I really didn't mention this program is there are some Windows users that have used KDE Connect. However, it did require them to build it from source and get a Windows installer to install KDE Connect. So that's pretty hilarious. It's, it's actually really, really difficult to install on Windows, but on Linux, you just type one command and it installs it. The irony is real with that one. <laughs> so I found that kind of humorous. I didn't really mention it in the video because uh, I don't think any Windows user will, will actually do that. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Maybe me, but I, I kind of like to tinker just to say I did something. Uh, as far as actually using it on a Windows machine, eh, maybe KDE in the future will just release a package and host the binary so you don't have to do the compiling. Uh, but anyways, I thought I'd mention it. So with all that said, let me know your comments in the comment section below. And I'd like to thank all my patrons. Without you, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. And I'll see you in the next video.